Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I hope you are doing fine. First, let me apologize. This video has been delayed by a long time. I believe about three weeks, but I am back and I'm going to continue making these type of videos. In today's video, I will be talking about the different updates which happen on the side of Comfy UI. Mainly, I'm going to talk about Stable Diffusion 3 and the support inside of Comfy UI. I will also talk about Stable Audio as well as touch a little bit on ORAF Flow. I'm going to show you how to update and if you need any assistance on the workflow, I will show you where to get that workflow. Just drag and drop inside of Comfy UI. All right, so with that, let's just get started. All right, first you will need to update Comfy UI. And if you have the Comfy UI portable, you can go into the installation folder, go into updates, and then just double click on where it says update underscore Comfy UI dot BAT. Now, if you have not updated your Comfy UI in a while, it is possible that you will get some dependencies conflict. There were an update where the dependencies were changed. So in that case, you may have to do comfy UI and underscore Python underscore dependencies dot BAT. So first give update underscore comfy UI dot BAT a try. If not, then try the other one. That's just a simple double clicking on it and it will open the terminal and it will do the installation. Now, once that is done, you will need to go back and click on the run NVIDIA GPU or however you are starting comfy UI. It will continue update and download some additional dependencies there. Now, if you're not using the Comfy UI portable, then most likely you will have this as your default Comfy UI folder. In that case, you will need to open your terminal and just navigate, do CD and then the path to Comfy UI, type in git log. And if you get anything like this, it means that you have git install, but more importantly, you are in the correct folder the correct Comfy UI folder. If by chance you are not in the correct folder and if you do git log, it will tell you that the folder is not a git repository. So make sure you are inside the folder where it says server.py, there's a main.py as well. Now next you can just do git, let me put it at the top, you will type in git pull, press enter and this will update your Comfy UI repository. All right, so these are the different topics that I have prepared. And uh, the first one is SD3, Stable Diffusion Support inside of Comfy UI. Now, I'm not going to go into individual details on each and every update because there were a lot of optimization which happened during the past month. Instead, I'm going to show you how you can update your Comfy UI, how you can download the model, where are the workflows, and how to get started with a Stable Diffusion 3. So first, there will be a link in the description below. By now, you should be familiar with the Comfy UI GitHub repository by Comfy Anonymous. So if you scroll down, there will be a Comfy UI examples, click on it. And one of the examples will be about Stable Diffusion 3. So SD3 here, open this one. And at the top, you will see that we have two different uh, models which you can download. The first one is 5.5 gigabytes. And this is the one that I will be using mainly because of RAM limitation. But if you want to test the other one, you have the required RAM or VRAM, then you can test the other one. Basically, the main difference is that the 5.5 gigabyte one, the SD medium include clip has only the clip L and clip G. By the name, you may be familiar with it from SDXL. Now with the 10.1 gigabyte one, there is one additional clip, the T5XXL clip inside it. Now, regardless of which one you're using, simply click on the link. This will send you to hugging face and look for the one that uh, you want to download i'm going to go with this one which is the five point almost six gigabyte to download it you can click on this little icon here to download if you want to download the other version you can choose the one that says fp8 this is the one that's around 11 gigabyte there's another version which is fp16 but this one as you can see it's going to take around 16 gigabyte all right so once you have it downloaded it will be somewhere in your downloads folder you can click on it press 
press F2 to rename or you can right click and choose rename from the context menu and then give it a, a name. For me, I'm just using the default name as the three medium include clip. Then press control X or you can right click and select cut. Then go into your Comfy UI folder. So go into models, go into checkpoints and then paste the model here. All right. So it should be along your SD 1.5 as well as SDXL models. Now go back to that GitHub example page and the first one is going to give you a basic workflow. You can right click, save the image, or you can simply click on the image, drag over to Comfy UI, and then release it. It will load that workflow. So you need to make sure that the load checkpoint is pointing towards the SD3 checkpoint. Now, depending on the one that you've downloaded, select that one. I'm going to select SD medium include clips dot save tenses. And do note one thing here if you're trying to build this workflow from scratch, you will need to make sure that you use the empty SD3 latent image. Do not do the default one that we have from Comfy UI, the empty latent image. This one, you can keep it for SD 1.5, 2, 2.1, as well as SDXL. Maybe in the future, we are going to get some updates, but for now, this is how you'll need to do it. Now, keep in mind that this is a base model. So most of the time when you're using a base model, you will need to use quite a high number of steps. In this particular case, the example says that 30 is steps, the CFG is at 5 5.5 and then you can see that we have the sampler and schedule there okay so i've done a quick render well i'm saying quick but it's actually quite long it took about 10 minutes to generate this default um, image so a bottle with pink red galaxy inside and you can see the rest there that that's basically what you get when you just drag and drop the workflow in here now i've done a second one so number one here and this one i've changed the prompt i said back Batman and Superman fight and you can see it's quite decent the quality is quite high as you would expect from SD3 now going back to that github example page if you scroll down you will see that we have another workflow that you can use and if you scroll down a little bit more there will be one with control net so you can drag this image to comfy UI let go now same thing make sure that the checkpoint is pointing towards your checkpoint the model that you've downloaded now you'll notice that in here the clip text encode which normally would contain the negative prompt this one has been zeroed out and in the example page here if you scroll up once and you you look for this line it tells you here that sd3 performs very well when the negative prompt has been zeroed out so the negative conditioning is zeroed out and this is an example here you can test that as well now for the control net, you will need to download the specific SD3 control net and you can get it from the example page as well. Go into SD3 control net and there will be a link to Instant X. This is the company that basically provided these control nets. Now to download it, we have Canny control net. You can click on where it says here. We'll sign you to hugging page and this time you can click on this download button here. Now back to your file explorer, you can go into the download downloads find that control net model there and then move it to the control net folder now everything else should be familiar you will have your load image for the control net keep in mind that this one will be canny and because the sd3 latent image is 1024 by 1024 you want to make sure that you are scaling or cropping your image to a 1024 by 1024 resolution and also know that we are using the control net apply sd3 instead of the apply control net that uh, you may be familiar with this right the rest should be fairly easy aside from that i think the rest is pretty much like optimization or support for the previews and then there's a couple of workflows so let's move on to stable audio and stable audio is basically making audio inside of comfy ui so it's going to be machine generated 
good audio. Don't expect to get something that you can use in music production, but it should be quite good based on my testing. Now back to that Comfy UI example page, scroll down until you see audio models. Give it a click. It will open the page and it will tell you that you will need to download two different models. This top one will be for the clip and the bottom one is the main checkpoint. So let's go for the clip, click on the link. Again, it's going to take you to Hugging Face. Click on the download button and know that this one is about 900 megabytes in size. Now, once you have it downloaded, cut it, move it to your Comfy UI clip folder, okay? Inside the clip, I've renamed my as stable-audio-clip.save tenses. You can rename it using this name as well if you want to be consistent with the workflow. Now, next is the main checkpoint, the audio model. Again, once you click on it, it will take you to Hugging Face. Now, in this particular case, I've already accepted the license. But in your case, if this is the first time that you're doing it, you get something like this. It will tell you to, that you need to agree and accept the license. So you just need to fill in this form. You can put a name here, email address, select your country. Organization, if, if you're not part of a, any organization or affiliation, you can set it to none and then whether you want to get updates and then click on this agree and access the repository. It will take you here where you will need to download this model.save tensor. There's also a .ckpt if uh, you want that version. It's about five gigabytes in size. Now again, it's going to be into you in your downloads folder. So move it inside of Comfy UI models and then checkpoints. It's going to be the same place as where you put your SD 1.5 or SDXL model. For me, I've renamed mine as stable audiosave tenses, and you can see the size here. Now, in order to get the workflow, you can click on these three dots, click on download. This is going to download a an audio file. Or you can simply click on this download button here and it's about five megabytes in size it's an actual audio file and you can see the extension here dot flac right now based on what i've understood the comfy ui cannot do mp3 mp4 those type of extension you can only do this uh, flac extension so wherever you've downloaded it most likely it's going to be in your downloads folder all right so i have my file browser here on the bottom left and comfy ui is in the back i'm going to select that audio file drag it on top of comfy ui let go and it will load the workflow if you think note in this particular case make sure that you are loading the correct clip now in my case i've renamed it stable audio dash clip but if you've used that other name, T5, choose that one. And then for the load checkpoint, want to make sure that you're using the stable audio or whichever name that you've given it to. The one that's about 4.5 gigabyte one. All right, then there's a positive and negative. Same thing as SD3. This one as well, we have a dedicated empty latent audio node. So make sure you're using this one. And there's a widget to control the length of that audio. By default, it's around 47 seconds. Now the case sampler in this particular example it says 50 steps and then we have the sampler the schedule uh, the cfg all of that is already selected the va decode is also a new one we have a va decode audio for the audio file there's also a dedicated save audio node as well now I've done a few tests here and it took about, all right, so this is the one here where 50 steps and that's where the audio it took about five, well, let's just say four minutes in my case. And when I dropped it down to 30 steps and only a 20 seconds audio, it was about less than a minute. And keep in mind that I am running a GTX 1650, which is pretty low end right now. Then my total VRAM is four gigabytes and the two total RAM is 32. So if you have something better, you should get a speed up.
Oh, and you can see the SD3 here is about 10 minutes here. Okay, so this was the example for the audio. We can take a, can listen to it. I'm not sure if it's actually recording the audio right now, but um, you can give it a test. It's about five minutes anyways. So this version where it's 47 seconds and 50 steps is actually quite good. And I can see it being used in video games or maybe in intro or outro. I've done a second one where I've changed the number of seconds to 20 and then the step count to 30. And this one is just not usable. So maybe using a higher step count is better and maybe boosting the number of seconds for the audio duration. Maybe that one is better. I'll, I'll have to do some more testing in order to confirm which of these different settings would be the correct one. Now, there, there were a few other updates, as you can see, the these were the different optimization and updates that were done for a stable audio. Now there are a couple of reworks as well. The menu and the workflow management was worked on, some bug fixes. There's also a an issue template on GitHub. So if you're one of those people who find bugs and would like to report those, make sure to check the issue template. There are different steps that you can fill in in order to ensure that your issue log is being is in the correct format. This will help developers just quickly glance at these issues and categorize them. There's also a contributing guidelines that was added for Comfy UI project. Now, in case you're wondering for the issue, when you go into issues here and you click on new issue, well, um, I'm not signed in right now, but when you click on the new issue, you will get that template that you can fill in. And for contribution, you can go into contributing here and basically you will just read these and see how, what is the correct format when you are contributing. Now let's go back to Comfy UI. One last thing I think is the Aura Flu model implementation. Now for this one, I was not able to test it and I will show you why. So go back to Comfy UI, Comfy UI examples, and then scroll down until you see Aura Flu. And if you look at uh, the description here, it tells you that Aura Flu is the one of the only true open source model with both the code and the weights being under FOSS license, meaning that it's not just the code, but also the weight. So basically the model, which is open source. And this is different uh, from other models. And that's why it's basically saying it's the only true open source. Now, if you go into the Hugging Face page, and if you read the description here, it will tell you that this model is currently in beta. So it's basically being worked on and we can expect to have some maybe more version or different versions that will be released later on. From the example, we can see that it can do text and there are some dynamic poses as well. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to test this one. The Comfy UI example does provide the workflow. So you can click on this image, drag onto Comfy UI, and it will open the workflow. However, the model here, this Aura Flow 0.1, you can get it from the Hugging Face. So into the Aura Flow page, Hugging Face, go into Files and Version. And if you check the model here, you will see that it's around 16.4 gigabytes. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the VRAM to test this model. So if you do have the system requirements and you do test it, let me know how this one goes and whether you're able to get these, these examples here from, uh, from the page. All right, so that was the last update that I have for you today. I'm sure i would missed a couple of updates. I was out for about three weeks and uh, I've only now started coming back into flow. If there were anything that it was important that I missed, let me know in the comments down below and I will get back to you on that one. With that, I hope this video was helpful in helping you understand a little bit about the different updates that was happening around the Comfy UI community. All right, so stay safe, take care, and I will see you in the next one.